Jerome Bruner was an American psychologist who was born on October 1st, 1915, and died on June 5th, 2016, at the age of 100. He was most known for his contributions to cognitive psychology and educational psychology. Bruner was born blind. However, thanks to the medical advancements of the time, by the time he was two years old, he had gained the ability to see. Bruner's parents had come to America from Poland. They had come and settled in New York City. It might also be of interest to note that they were of the Jewish faith. Brunner was able to attend Duke University, where he received a master's degree in psychology on, in 1939. He also attended Harvard University and earned a doctorate, also in psychology, in 1941. Four short years later, he returned to Harvard as a professor. While at Harvard, both as a student and a professor, he was heavily involved in researching cognitive and educational psychology. Bruner is known for his cognitive learning theory, also known as the cognitive development theory. It is made up of three modes of representation that are loosely sequential, meaning that while they have age limits applied, they are not completed as the child ages, but rather advance. The first stage is known as the inactive stage, but it is also known as the concrete stage. In this stage, memory and action-based learning begins with touching and feeling. An example of this is a baby playing with blocks and learning how to put them into an order where they continue to stand up. Another more commonly used example is when a baby shakes a rattle and remembers the sound that it makes every time they do that action. This stage focuses on children who are aged 0 to 1, but as you can see from the picture of Bruner assisting a child in this stage, it is not limited to that age group. The next stage is known as the iconic stage. It is also known as the pictorial stage. This is image-based learning. Use of images to represent concrete experiences results in the highest understanding. Information is being stored visually in the form of images and later being recalled. For example, when learning new things, it is usually helpful to include a diagram or illustrations to help learn about these materials. This stage is focused primarily on ages 1 to 6. However, just as in the stage before it, it is not limited to these ages and is usually used in combination with the inactive stage. The third stage is known as the symbotic stage. It is also known as the abstract age. It is a language-based learning style. Images from the last stage are represented with words and symbols. These relating concepts are linked together and the children begin to think abstractly. An example for this, learning a math concept is easier if you are able to understand and recall the formula, which is usually made up of words or letters or numbers all of which are symbols, this stage of development is believed to be used from age 7 onward in life.
Gruner proposed the spiral curriculum, sometimes known as the recycling curriculum, a teaching in which each subject or skill area is revisited at intervals, at a more superior level each time. First, there is basic knowledge of a subject, then more is added, reinforcing principles that were first discussed. This system is used in China and India. In the United States, classes are split up by grade, life sciences in ninth grade, chemistry in 10th grade, physics in 11th. The spiral teaches life sciences, chemistry, and physics all in one year, then two subjects, then one, then all three again to understand how they mold together. This theory is the basis for the way most schools and textbooks are organized. Brunner believed that learning should be sparked by interest in the material rather than by fear of tests, deadlines, or punishments. He said this as one learns best when they find the knowledge they are obtaining interesting. To quote the man himself, the essence of creativity is figuring out how to use what you already know in order to go beyond what you already think. Strengths and Limitations Much like Piaget, the timing of the stages caused him to receive much criticism. The inference that once someone reached seven years of age, that they reached cognitive maturity, brought much scrutiny upon the theory. However, the building of the stages, where one is added upon another, rather than completed, sparked much positive discussion.